This is the story of the OPAD, the Origami Paper Analytical Device. So there are two elements to this story that make it kind of neat. One is how Hong Lu, the chemistry graduate student who you see here, who invented the OPAD, got his inspiration for the device. He was reading a paper by Harvard chemist George Whitesides about what's called a 3D microfluidic paper sensor. And it struck him that the methods Whitesides and his colleagues were using to assemble the device were a lot more complex than they needed to be. They had to use laser cutters and two-sided tape. And once it was all taped together, it couldn't be unfolded. So that placed real constraints on the amount of data you could extract from the sensor. So Hong was reading this, and he thought back to the origami lessons he got as a boy growing up in China. It's art from Asia. I'm from China. So when I was very young, a teacher taught us how to fold the paper into a, the animal. And when I read the three-dimensional microfluid paper by George Weiss, I, I, I think it doesn't have to be that difficult. It can be very easy just fold the paper and then apply pressure so that you can make vertical action between different layers. The next part of this story, and really the more amazing part, is the process that Hong developed as a result of that inspiration. How simple that process is and how that simplicity creates the potential to test for diseases like malaria and HIV for just a few cents a test with almost instantaneous results. It starts here, a common office printer, common printer paper, and a wax-based ink that you can buy off the shelf. Hong just designs the sensor on the computer to whatever specs he wants, and then he just clicks print. It prints out, he pulls it out of the printer, and then he just cuts it out, sort of like little girls sometimes cut out paper dolls. He folds it up until all the layers are stacked on top of each other, and then he just puts it between two pieces of glass onto a hot plate. And all the hot plate does is it melts the wax ink, the black stuff, so that wherever that black is, that realm of the paper is hydrophobic, literally afraid of water it becomes a no-flow zone for whatever water-based sample you're testing. Then those remaining spaces, those stark white channels, which are hydrophilic, are where the biological sample is going to flow. So blood, urine, saliva, they'll avoid the wax and flow into these channels. And embedded in these channels are what are called biomarkers. And biomarkers are just substances that react in a certain way when they're in the presence of whatever you're looking for. So if you're looking for some protein that's characteristic of malaria-infested blood, then the biomarkers will react in the presence of that protein. Often they'll just turn a certain color, or they'll fail to turn a certain color. So what you do is you put in your sample, it's drawn up into the sensor, and you can do individual tests at each layer, or you can do complex tests that are the result of the vertical connections between different markers embedded at different layers. Then you just unfold it, and it's like reading a pregnancy test. Blue means yes, the absence of blue means no, and that's it. This all costs very little money. It can be folded by anyone with steady hands. It's stable, so it can be stored and shipped over long distances, and it could, in the not-too-distant future, save a lot of lives. So that's pretty cool.